Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is March the 7th, 2024. Let me just point out that I'm away from home uh, on a little bit of a mini vacation, and I can't get the lighting to work well here. So I went with the Avatar, and let me just say, some of you like the Avatar, some of you hate the Avatar. <laughs> I'm back giving a live video a go at it. But understand from time to time, because of the circumstances, I will have to use stand-ins like avatars. Now remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say a couple of things here. Um, online, I noticed um, people are talking about the fact that uh, lately, in fact, since the Dooku Kim fight for some sanctioning bodies in the 1980s, um, Vinny Pazienza, Dooku Kim, people are pointing out that they miss the 13th, 14th, and 15th rounds, right? They used to be called the championship rounds. Now we talk about the 10th, 11th, and 12th. Now I'm one of those people who's a natural skeptic. I believe you need to look at not stated intentions, but unexpected, unintended consequences. Just to understand, Zhili Zhang had a hard time going the distance against Jerry Forrest, right? Critics of Zhang are going to look at the last few rounds of his fights to see if he has the stamina to make it the distance. That Philippe Ergovic fight, and that's a controversial fight. Many people feel Zhang won that fight. But if you believe Ergovic won the fight, you believe he did so in the last three rounds, right? Because Zhili Zhang faded a little bit in those rounds. Now, I'd like to just be a little critical of the sport. Just take this as fan commentary. Um, I'm not one of the powers that be. The powers that be who look at YouTube videos should at least think about these ideas. Isn't the net result, isn't the unintended consequence of eliminating the 13th, 14th, and 15th rounds that we have these now big, bulky heavyweights by historical standards? Right? Understand, Anthony Joshua is much bigger than Big George Foreman. Right? Much bigger. Right? Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, folks, these are historically tall heavyweights. Right? Go down the line. Look at Martin Bacoli's height. You're going to see a bunch of guys who are bigger than the historical average by a wide margin. Understand, Jack Johnson would be small today. Back in his day, he was called a Galveston Giant. Right now, my question to boxing is whether that's a good thing. Are fighters safer because these days you're fighting some guy like Anthony Joshua, who's, I'm guessing here, 6'6", thick neck, you know, heavy muscles, a guy who looked tired and out of it after getting off the canvas against Vladimir Klitschko, right? Are, is that the heavyweight division that you feel is safer than the one of, let's say, Rocky Marciano or think about the thriller in Manila, right? Joe Fraser, who would be small by today's standards, as would Rocky Marciano. Um, the thing with the Fraser, as you saw in the thriller in Manila, is Fraser had stamina. Right back when these fights were 15 rounds, these fighters had to come across as being ready to go 15 rounds. Understand, back then, I would argue you had a better level of athlete. You had guys on their toes dancing. Right, Larry Holmes, early in his career, right? During Holmes' career, they then shortened fights to 12 rounds. Uh, these days... If you see a fighter dancing outside of Frank Sanchez in the heavyweight division, it's a novelty. 
right? I don't expect to see Anthony Joshua up on the balls of his feet. I don't expect to see Francis Ngannou up on the balls of his feet. Think about Francis Ngannou for a second. Folks, he weighs more than 270 pounds. You know, there was a time when we thought that Lennox Lewis was a big heavyweight. Right, folks? There are multiple heavyweights today who are bigger than Lennox Lewis. Right, so I want people to think this through. Right, don't you get a different type of boxer when the fight is a 15-round fight? Think about the pacing of the fight, too. Let's say Anthony Joshua gets caught like Tyson Fury got caught by Francis Ngannou. Right, he's going to get off the canvas and he's going to think to himself, gee, I've got to make a statement now. Because this fight's only 10 rounds. Understand, the shorter the fight, the more the urgency, the more the risk the fighters have to take. Right, if Joshua's fight against Ngannou was a 15-round fight, Joshua could hit the canvas, could get off the canvas like Joe Lewis did against Jersey Joe Walcott. Right, could dust himself off and could say, okay, great, let me win some rounds. Let me clear my head. Let me take two, three rounds to do that. Let me win some rounds. Let me let this MMA guy understand that this isn't an MMA event, right, of five rounds. No, this is 15 rounds. Let me pace myself, then let me step on the gas in the 11th and 12th rounds. These days, he can't do that. These days, it's blood and guts, right? You're in a 10-round fight. You get dropped. You get off the canvas. Hey, you got to get after it, whether you're dazed and confused or not. Let's say it's a 12-round fight. Understand, there are many fights. Leonard Hearns, the first fight, where at the end of 12 rounds, Ray Leonard is losing that fight. Right? A lot of fights would have changed if it were only a 12-round fight. The reason Leonard Hearns is a classic is because Leonard comes back in the 13th round, closes the show in the 14th round. Thomas Hearns beats Leonard, as he did, by the way, in the rematch, but they call that a draw. But Hearns would have beaten Leonard, and the 80s might have been different if it were a 12 round fight. So I understand we want to feel good about ourselves. I understand we want to feel warm and fuzzy. We want to say, hey, we're protecting the fighters by cutting these 15 round championship fights down to 12 rounds. Right? The next time you see a Gili Zhang in the ring, the next time you're watching a fight like this Joshua and Ganu fight, think about it. In terms of the size of the guys, I believe this is one of the biggest fights, just size-wise, that, that I'm going to see in my life. Right? You can't have these Goliaths if it's a 15-round fight. Are we better off having these bigger, clunkier heavyweights with a 12-round fight limit? Let's shift gears. Now, full disclosure... I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not pretending to be a medical doctor. I'm just a boxing fan who makes YouTube videos. Right? So what I'm about to say is complete speculation. I'm just speculating based on my own observation of this athlete for several fights. Now I feel it's clear that Ryan Garcia, who people should know, has made more than $20 million in his career. Right? Ryan Garcia doesn't need boxing at this stage. Right? What's keeping Ryan going is the fact that he was a star amateur. He wants to be a star professional. Other guys who he fought in the amateurs, people like Devin Haney, are, let's be blunt here, having better pro careers than him. 
and Garcia feels that he can compete, right? Understand, Ryan Garcia in the amateurs beat Virgil Ortiz, for example. So, Ryan Garcia, who could walk away from the sport, who's financially set, is continuing on in the sport. And we're finding out, and again, this is purely speculation on my part, that Ryan Garcia might suffer from bipolar disorder. Right? I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. Right? Now, here's the problem I have. Here again, I understand people have the best of intentions. Be careful when people come up to you and say, hey, we're here to help. Right? So, of course, people are saying, hey, Ryan needs to tend to his health. Right? Keith Thurman said Ryan might want to prioritize his health more than his next fight. Right? Now, keep in mind, Keith Thurman gave one of the most cringe-worthy performances at a press conference I've ever seen at the Tim Zhu fight announcement press conference. I'm not going to recommend that people look at that press conference because Thurman was way off his game. It was an embarrassment. You know you're on shaky ice when Keith Thurman is telling people how they should behave. Right? No knock on Thurman. I believe he's an underrated fighter. Right? I've been a long time admirer of Keith Thurman. People here know I picked Thurman over Danny Garcia in a big fight years ago, right? But the bottom line is Ryan Garcia has been wildly successful in boxing. We could take the Jake Paul approach and say, hey, look, uh, he's only had one big money fight. Who cares? That fight cashed. <laughs> he, he has delivered on the promise financially. Whatever you believe his problems are with his promoter, right? Um, you know, and I believe a lot of it is bipolar disorder oriented problems, right? I think Oscar De La Hoya, I think Bernard Hopkins would like nothing better than to see Ryan Garcia be successful. Understand, the promoter is making money with you, right? I believe Ryan Garcia, and no one wants to say it out loud, is one of these guys who's hard to promote because he is a loose cannon. But people need to understand that Ryan Garcia has already made more money than 99.999% of us watching and making this video. The sport's delivered for him. He's successful. He's more successful than many more accomplished fighters. So, from time to time, if you know bipolar disorder, from time to time, he's going to be on Instagram. The mood's going to hit him, and he's going to send out some things on Instagram that are a little bit odd. Right? From time to time, he's going to be on social media, and he's going to send out some posts that are going to be a little bit odd. Right? But what I want to know here is... What would be the goal of stopping Ryan Garcia, who has been successful, from fighting to tend to his mental health? Right? I need for people to think this through. Bipolar disorder is episodic. This is a sporting event, so we really can't allow bipolar people to be medicated for fights, right? One of the measuring sticks in boxing is the degree to which a fighter can handle adversity, can handle stressful moments. That's part of boxing. You can't have the fighter on mood stabilizers in a boxing match. So understand, Ryan Garcia one day might be on Instagram and might be sending some messages that are a little bit risque, maybe not politically correct, right? Um, he might be a little bit excited, might not fully understand the inappropriateness of what he's posting. But understand it's been this way for most of his career, if you followed him. And he's been successful. Are you sure that preventing him from boxing 
is going to help him. And if so, please tell us how. Right? You're going to take away a big paycheck from him? You're going to take away a part of his life that requires structure, that has him around a trainer, in a gym, working on a goal, working with sparring partners, that has him out with other professionals with a goal, a purpose. Right? If all Ryan Garcia has is bipolar disorder, let's not take away his vocation, his craft, which has allowed him to be a multimillionaire many times over. Let me also make another point too, and you know my belief is life's unfair. Right? It's, you know, I, I listen to people you know, talk about things differently, and I have to admit, I don't get it, right? So, of course, in boxing, you have a lot of people who want a great slot. Devin Haney is successful. He's one of the champs at 140 pounds. He got that belt by beating Regis Progre, right? The fight's in New York City, big venue. So now, here's a shock. Not only do people want, not only are people suggesting that Ryan Garcia take time off to tend to his health, but of course they have replacements in mind. Fighters are actually volunteering. Now I need for people to break out the groups here. Here online, the folks like us, you and me, who actually look at boxing videos, who you know, are excited when a fight's, you know, announced, who actually tune in to look at weigh-ins, right, who try to find out what's happening in sparring, who openly wonder, did Tyson Fury actually get cut in sparring, or was something else going on that led to the delay of the Usyk fight? Right, the boxing hardcore, we appreciate a whole group of fighters out there who the public is less enthusiastic about. Right, you really can't say these things in public because interviewers want access to the fighters. Right, they don't want to say, hey, you know, player, the public's not that enthused about you. You know, hey, hey, gee, you don't have the market power of a Ryan Garcia who doesn't have the belts you have. So, of course, we're hearing that Shakur Stevenson, for example, wants to fight Devin Haney, right? You know, I think Shakur Stevenson is an excellent fighter, right? In time, he'll figure out not to be too excessive on his back foot, right? He's, he's a young guy. So he's on his back foot perhaps more than he should be, right? But the one thing I know with certainty is that while boxing hardcore fan people like you and me might be excited by the idea of Shakur Stevenson fighting Devin Haney, right? Let's not confuse that with the real world. Let's not confuse that with the groups of fans, and there are a lot of them, I mean a lot of them, who view the fight as Ryan Garcia, A-side, against Devin Haney. Understand, Ryan Garcia is the person here who has a lot of fans. I'm not saying he has the belts that Devin Haney has had in his career that Shakur Stevenson has had in his career. I'm not saying he's as good a fighter as either Haney or Stevenson. Right, but what I am saying is understand celebrity. Understand box office kings. We don't talk about it enough in the sport. Right, we say who's the best in the division? We don't ask the question of who's the best in the division box office wise, right? Anthony Joshua, even people who think I'm biased against Anthony Joshua will concede that I've openly acknowledged 
that in the heavyweight division, and to me, that's the glamour division in boxing, Anthony Joshua has been the box office king for several years. Well, I need for folks to understand that at 140, I believe the box office king is going to be Ryan Garcia. Garcia fought Gervonta Davis at 136. Even a cash cow like Gervonta Davis never made the money in the past that he made fighting Ryan Garcia. Right? None of the names being mentioned, Shakur Stevenson or any other name, is going to give you the box office of Ryan Garcia against Devin Haney. I got news for you too. Let's say Ryan Garcia says, okay, I'm a little excited in the build up to this fight. Uh, let me take some time off from the sport. He has in the past, right? Folks, I got news for you. If you know bipolar disorder, let's be upfront with mental health, right? Bipolar disorder doesn't magically go away. You can treat it, but it doesn't magically go away. So to me, okay, Ryan Garcia is a little excited here. All right. You know, my point is simply there's no reason for Ryan Garcia to cancel this fight. Right? He's excited. He believes he is the cash cow at 140, and I believe he's likely right. I don't believe Teofimo Lopez is as loved as him. I don't believe Josh Taylor is as loved as him. I don't believe Matthias is as loved as him. Right? I don't believe Shakur Stevenson is as loved as him. Right? Ryan Garcia is unique. Let's enjoy the uniqueness right let me shock you a little bit he's not the first fighter who has had some mental health challenges right the bottom line is Ryan Garcia can show up he has an excellent left hook as long as he operates within the rules great right he's just being ebullient he's not you know, physically hurting himself or hurting others. Let him fight. Right? I believe mental health needs to be discussed. People with mental health conditions need to be allowed to fully participate in the world with the rest of us. Right? So Ryan Garcia, okay, he's a little excited. I don't think he's putting his life at risk here any more than, let's say, any other boxer in the sport. Understand, Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou, and this is the nature of the sport, are hoping to give the other fighter a concussion in their fight. Ray Robinson put it best. He said, this is the hurt business. Right? Are we really going to be that excited about a guy who has mood swings in a sport when <laughs> in a sport in a sport where you know the goal of the match is to knock people out right so let's slow our roll i'll be disappointed if ryan garcia has to withdraw from this devin haney fight let me also say too that if i'm devin haney Understand, Ryan Garcia poses one set of issues. You can't just agree, particularly when you're unbeaten like Devin Haney, to have a different opponent sub in. Because, of course, the pay-per-view numbers are going to be down, the risk-reward is going to be different, and that opponent is going to have a different fight style. Shakur Stevenson is a lefty. Right? He's not a righty with a big left hook like Ryan Garcia is. So if Devin Haney is training to fight an orthodox fighter with a big left hook, it's unfair to him if we swap out to a new opponent. Let's think this through. Right, Sometimes the unintended consequences are worse than the problem we're trying to solve here. 
folks, we're not going to be able to solve Ryan Garcia's bipolar disorder. Denying him the opportunity to fight, to me, would be a virtual signaling that's ineffective. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.